what I feel about health systems in India is that a lot of public funds are being wasted on issues where the funds could have been really utilized for proper evidence-based systems of delivery of health. Because in India we are supporting many systems which have absolutely no evidence. For example, Ayurveda, Yoga and Naturopathy, Yunani, Siddha, Homeopathy, none of these have got any evidence. But still they are recognized. Okay? There is a board which recognizes them called as the Board of Indigenous Medicine. Fine. But there is one more group where you have neither recognition nor any sort of evidence. That is things like electrohomeopathy, magnetotherapy, acupressure, acupuncture, urine therapy, mind you. And even in urine therapy, there is auto-urine therapy, heterourine therapy. With such quackery going on in this country, I feel that there is a lot of wastage of public funds, public time, and also deterioration in the quality of health services because of this confusing terminology about systems of medicine. Quackery in India comes in all shapes, sizes, colors. Because quacks are encouraged by people in positions of power. And quackery is sometimes supported by these people. Because of that, these people are flourishing all over the place. And you know, these quacks have got very nice bedside manners. They speak very well to the patients. And then they give a rosy picture and people fall into the traps of these quacks. So quackery in India has absolutely no control over it. And again, there are qualified quacks. Though they have got a qualification or a registration in one system of medicine, when they practice the other one, they automatically become quacks. And by the way, who is a quack? The quack is a person who claims to have some qualification which he does not have, or claims to have some skill which he does not have. And such people you can find in thousands and thousands all over the country. Yes, I see them. Because each party wants to cater to their vote banks. And if some powerful person in their vote bank follows some untested, unproven so-called system of medicine, they will support that. For example, Ayurveda is being supported by Bharatiya Janata Party. Congress government in Karnataka is supporting Ayush, all of them together, Ayurveda, Yunani, Siddha, Homeopathy. In fact, I am told that they give options to the patients. Either you can go here or go there. Just imagine that. You are telling the people you can go to a qualified man or you can go to a quack. So, with such political support, it is no wonder why quackery thrives in the country. And again, these quacks may be close to particular politicians. And when that politician endorses a particular quack, everybody will go to that quack because a politician is endorsing the thing that he must be a genuine healer. The successive governments promoting Ayush is a totally nonsensical move whichever government that may be in power. There is nothing called as alternative medicine. If it works, it's called as medicine. If it doesn't work, then it's called as alternative. That's all. So when this is the fact, when WHO does not recognize any system of medicine except the modern scientific system of medicine, I don't know why the government should promote Ayush. It is probably because they have got vested interest there. And again, in Ayush, it's very difficult to account for things. For example, if the accounts are audited, it's very difficult to say why so much was paid for a particular thing. 
why so much money was spent on a particular type of fuel? Because there is absolutely no standardization. And again, giving alternatives to people is like giving an alternative to them between life and death. Such things should not be done. And many of these so-called alternative systems, they are against known proper treatments, which are approved by the World Health Organization. Some of them are against vaccination, some of them are against use of antibiotics, some of them are against surgery, so on and it goes on. So the government promoting Ayush is a waste of public money. The best way to curb quackery is by making proper medical services by qualified people easily available to the public without any hassles. Once that starts, people may prefer going to a person who practices scientific medicine than to a quack. The other thing is making people aware about quackery. What are the ill effects of quackery? How quackery can damage them irreversibly? So once you educate people, probably they may think before going to quacks. Again, our education system is faulty. Our education system doesn't teach critical thinking. Our education system teaches people to believe in somebody in a position of authority. And when that person who is apparently in a position of authority is a quack, they'll take whatever the quack says without any question. So, a systematic campaign against quackery done at various levels, starting from right from the primary health centre, the only way to curb quack is a very important thing. A quack will say he has got some unique system of treatment so far unknown to science. A quack will give a money back guarantee. A quack will put away qualifications which are not the proper norms and they will try to get foreign degrees. Something like MRSH, member of the Royal Society of Hygiene. This is not a medical qualification at all. But somebody puts it and would think that he is a doctor because member of the Royal Society of something starting with H. Because it must be related to health. They give testimonials of patients saying that I was cured of cancer by the treatment of so and so. Whenever you see a testimonial of a patient as an act, you can be sure that that person is a quack. Whenever somebody gives you a money back guarantee, you can be sure that that person is a quack. Whenever a person says that he has got a secret system of medicine or treatment which cannot be revealed to anybody because it is coming in his family from generation to generation, given by some holy man and an oath taken not to reveal it to anybody, then you can be sure that that person is a quack. And again, to find out whether a person is a quack, you can always ask the registration number of that person before you take that treatment, which most of us don't like. And again, when you question a quack, what is your qualification? The standard answer given there is, do you want treatment or do you want my qualification? Do you want to recover from the disease or do you want to bother about my qualifications? And many times these quacks put very unreasonable restrictions. Don't drink uh, something which is hot. Don't drink something which is cold. Don't eat something that grows above the ground. Don't eat anything that walks on two legs. Don't eat anything that walks on four legs. Like that you can, they give lots of restrictions so that if something goes wrong, they can always say that you did not follow their instructions properly and that is why it happened. So these are some of the points. But the main thing in identifying a quack is you, you should be aware of what treatment you are getting. I tell the lawmakers, before you make laws, consult the proper people. Consult the medical council. Consult the medical practitioners who are in government service. Consult appropriate scientific bodies. And don't go by your personal prejudices. 
or personal likes because the law some lawmaker would have been cured of something because of a, of the placebo effect or because of a self limiting disorder by somebody's concoction and he will uh, think that that person thinks works but actually it doesn't whether a thing works or not should be left to the experts to decide and not for the unqualified lawmakers the evidence based medicine practitioners uh, should have had a major role in curbing quackery but sadly they do not they do not come out and express themselves against quacks in fact once i was addressing the indian medical association the president told me that as long as they take 1 rupee 2 rupee it is all right when they start conducting 100 rupee 200 rupees then we shall start exposing them i said if that is the case i'm walking out of your meeting because you are exposing a quack not because he is a threat to you you are exposing a quack because he is a threat to the patients that is the attitude that should be taken by proper qualified people who practice evidence based medicine quack cannot be a competitor to a qualified person provided the qualified person also raises his voice we are taking up cases where quack comes we are encouraging people to file consumer cases we are exposing these quacks by writing about them we are also teaching the medical students what are the modus operandi of quacks how they conduct their operations and we are also showing those to the public many of these attractive techniques of the quacks thereby we are helping to curb quacks